Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, I had a voice for radio. So today, we're going to be looking at a brand new Stack Attacker card. In fact, this is the first time we will ever have looked at a non-GX Stack Attacker. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we've seen Stack Attacker GX, that came out a little while ago. But we've never actually seen a non-GX Stack Attacker. Well, the good news is the lovely David Hockman, Mr. Rappelman TCG himself, has revealed one for us this morning. So let's have a look, see, shall we? Starting off with the basics, it's got 120 HP, which is not ideal, because that means it is in range of being one hit KO'd by a Zoroark that has a full bench. So not a great start. The good news is you have a retreat cost of 4, which means Brawly Pads can come in and give you an extra 50 HP, which is pretty gosh darn awesome. So, that'll bring you up quite nicely. The weakness to grass is honestly fine. You see the odd thing around like Tapu, Bulu and Delmise, but grass Pokemon are hardly lighting the format on fire at the moment. So, that's alright. And the fact that you are a fighting Pokemon is really good. You've got Diante Prism Star to do a little bit of extra damage. You are hitting weakness on Zoroark, which is pretty gosh darn good. And then, of course, you're an Ultra Beast. So you've got stuff like Beast Energy to do an extra 30 damage. Or something like Ultra Space the Stadium to go ahead and search this out quite nicely indeed. But as with all of these cards, it's the attacks and abilities we are primarily concerned with. And the ability here is a weird one. What it says is, if your opponent has exactly three prize cards remaining, this Pokemon's maximum HP becomes 200. You get an extra 80 HP when your opponent has three prizes remaining. Now, this is very, very strange because we've seen a whole bunch of non-GXs in the past and we are used to them having an extra effect when either you or your opponent has a certain amount of prizes remaining. So the non-GX Zerkatry, for instance, says that if you have exactly three prize cards remaining, automatic paralysis, and the Buzzwall from Forbidden Light, which a whole bunch of people have played, says that you can do 120 damage for just one basic energy, just so long as your opponent has exactly four prize cards remaining. But this is the first time that we have seen something like this on an ability. And this leads to some kind of weird things. So your opponent takes a prize to go down to three prizes remaining, and then all of a sudden Stack Attacker gets an extra 80 HP. Meaning that you can chuck that Stack Attacker in the active, start attacking knowing that your opponent is much less likely to be able to KO it. I mean, look, we said that 120 was not an ideal amount, and I stand by that. But time you add brawny pads, you're up to 170. But then if this ability kicks in because your opponent has three prize cards remaining, all of a sudden you're sitting there with 250 HP. I mean, that's a stage two Metagross GX. Except it's a basic Pokemon and it has only given up one prize. But then you end up in some really weird situations here. So your opponent puts... 180 damage on this, we're not KO'd because your maximum HP is 200. But if your opponent then goes and KO's another one of your Pokemon, then the ability goes away, your maximum HP goes back down to 120, and you will be automatically KO'd. It's like using a Field Blower to remove a Fighting Fury Belt after enough damage has been done to KO. It means you get an extra KO coming on here. Or you could put 140 damage onto Stack Attacker and then bring out an Alolan Muck. Alolan Muck turns off basic abilities and this would get an immediate KO. Of course, if you've got Alolan Muck out since the beginning, remember that it turns off basic abilities, so Stack Attacker would not have that ability and its maximum HP would essentially always be rocking there somewhere around, by which I mean exactly, 120. So it's a nice ability, but it's incredibly strange. Something like Boswell, your opponent's got four prizes remaining, you come in, hit for 120, jobs are good un'. This gets extra HP when your opponent's got three prizes remaining, which means they can potentially take a mid-turn KO by not having three prizes remaining. Or it can be turned off by a Lola Muck, or your opponent can just do what people have been doing against Boswell since the Bin Light came out, just not have three prize cards remaining. 
just take GX KOs. It means they take a KO, go down to four prizes, take another KO, go down to two, and stack attack and never gets its ability. Now, if you're using a non-GX deck and force your opponent to only take one prize at a time, that means its ability will have to come in at some point, and it could be really good because you essentially force your opponent to take out one of your other Pokemon, and you have a turn where stack attack has got 200 HP, and your opponent is essentially forced to Guzma around it, because it's just too big and too bulky. The other thing to notice here is that if your opponent KOs a Tag Team GX, then they will go down to three prizes remaining, and that's got to be why it's three prizes here. It forces your opponent to think twice about KOing a Tag Team GX. As for the attack here, well, David has translated this as well because he's lovely. It's for two fighting, one colorless energy, and it does 110 damage, which in and of itself is not great. But you get to flip a coin until you hit tails, and you get to discard the top card from your opponent's deck for each heads that you hit. Now, in terms of damage here, this is really nice. You get an instant KO on Zekrom, and if you had a choice band, you're up to 140, so there's a one-hit KO with weakness on Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, or Eevee and Snorlax Tag Team GX. So the numbers here work beautifully. And the milling here, the discarding cards from your opponent's deck, is brilliant. Obligatory reference to the Victini from Guardians Rising here. You can hit one heads, discard one card, two heads, two cards, etc. And you're not always going to be hitting card after card after card after card after card. But you are going to often be hitting one or two heads. And discarding one or two cards. And that is potentially going to put you in a great situation where you discard one double colorless energy, but they're not able to recover it. Or you discard one Guzma, and then they're one Guzma away from winning the game. This isn't like Moltres that's going to be coming in team up. Moltres in team up lets you discard all the fire energy attached to it, and for each fire energy discarded, you discard a card from the top of your opponent's deck. This is not that. That is energy hungry and you've really got to go for it in terms of attaching energy but if you can you can really get a whole bunch of cards discarded and get some good on milling this is not gonna be that it's not a great milling attack but you can mill an extra card or two and that could absolutely make the difference here as for damage it's really good damage if you're hitting for weakness but actually, Beast Energy comes in nicely as well. Because if you use Beast Energy and Choice Band, then all of a sudden it's not 110, it's 170. And that's enough to KO a Tapu Lele. And then let's not forget that you can be using Shrine of Punishment, given that you are a non-GX Pokemon. So that's essentially 180 damage, and then that's 10 more between turns. So you've got stuff like Blacephalon, or stuff like Rayquaza, which will essentially go down to this in one hit as well. So you can get up to decent amounts of damage here. You do kind of cut off at 180, but that's on a non-GX. If you're hitting for weakness, this is great. If you're not hitting for weakness, the combination of Choice Band and Beast Energy and Shrine of Punishment will come in and help you here. The attack cost is incredibly awkward. There's no way around that. Maybe you use Counter Gain because you're behind on prizes. Maybe you use Counter Energy because you're behind on prizes. But the fact of the matter is here that Fighting Fighting Colorless is an awkward attack cost. But you're doing a lot of damage. You've got a lot of extra help, and I haven't even mentioned Brooklet Hill to search this out. Yeah, along with Ultra Space, there are two stadiums you can use to get this. A lot of support, decent amount of damage, and an ability that once during your game will give you a really beefy amount of HP. And the best way to use this is wait till your opponent's got three prizes remaining, whack it in the active and go, I've got 200 HP. You can use brawny pads, but you give up choice bands, so I'll leave that up to you. Really depends whether you need the extra 30 damage or not. You're not KOing me, so this turn you're probably going to have to attack the bench. Because even if they do more than 120 but don't KO you, they've still got to take another KO to turn off your ability and get the prize on you. I'm going to be giving this free Wossies. It's a really good card that's really awkward to use. So I think free Wossies is about fair. 
But I'd love to know what you think about this card, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please do remember the most important rule as always. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do exactly that. And do make sure you check it out youtube.com slash wassyplays, where we're currently revealing a whole bunch of new Transformers cards, some of which you can't see anywhere else. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.